Five years ago, NASA launched its first mission to an asteroid. OSIRIS-REx went to Bennu to gather a sample or two, and it'll bring them back to Utah, actually. They're coming back here. Now it's time for the mission to start its return back to Earth. Jessica Barnes, assistant professor at the University of Arizona's Lunar and Planetary Laboratory, is here to talk this morning about this exciting mission. And Jessica, it really is. And just so we can bring our viewers up to speed, let, let's give them a little background first um, of even why you did this in the first place, why landing on an asteroid, which sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So the OSIRIS-REx mission is a, like you say, it's a mission to an asteroid. It launched in 2016. And we chose to go to an asteroid because we think they're the, the remnants of the building blocks of our solar system. So they not only record its formation four and a half billion years ago, but everything that's happened to that asteroid and the space environment since then. So it's, it's not been a, a short trip, but now we've scooped up material from the surface and now today that material is going to make its journey home. Yeah, you have to be really patient because this sounds like a five-year round trip kind of deal. So why is it so important, though? I mean, you talk about some of the building blocks and things like this. It sounds like it must be important enough that we need to get all this stuff off. So what is so critical about today's mission, getting this thing off an asteroid? So we're already off the asteroid. We're currently orbiting the asteroid. And so what's going to happen this afternoon is the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft will fire its engines, and that will send it on a trajectory towards Earth. But it's not a straight shot. We have to make two trips around the sun, and it's going to take about two and a half years to get to, to Earth. Um, and then once we get to Earth, it's not uh, you know straightforward then either. We have to release the capsule. Uh, hope it come, the sample return capsule comes through the atmosphere, the, the parachutes will open, uh, and then the capsule will land, as you say, in the Utah desert on the 24th of September, 2023. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. The amount of time and effort and calculations that went into making this work and hopefully work, right? So tell us um, what happens then. Once we get these samples back, what are we hoping to learn? So, so that's the part I'm most excited for. As a sample scientist, I'm on the team that will, will analyze these materials, and we're really interested to learn uh, what types of organic molecules, carbon-based molecules are in the samples, what the water content is, when this material formed in our solar system, and the history of the asteroid since it, uh, all that material came together and accreted. Um, but we're an international team. We, are, we have collaborators from the Canadian Space Agency, the Japanese Space Agency, but as a sample analysis team, we'll only get access to about 25% of the return material. And the other 75% will be stored away for future generations. So you might have viewers or their grandchildren who will be the next generation that will analyze these samples when new technology is available to answer new scientific questions. Wow, I can't mm. believe this because we're such a now generation. It's like we want this stuff right now, but we have to wait for all this stuff. So, so the, uh, the spacecraft did a last flyover over uh, the, uh, the sample site. Why? So uh, on the 20th of October last year, we essentially punched the asteroid to collect our sample. And we figured based on the orbital observations, you know, the surface of Bennu is really uh, rugged, but it's also quite loose material. And we knew we would have made a mess. And so we basically wanted to have a look and see what type of mess we had made on the surface and how much material had moved around, uh, because that gives us a lot of information, not just about what's underneath the very top layers of the surface of Bennu that we've been imaging for the last two years, but also to understand how that type of material behaves um, you know, under very low gravity and in the space environment. So it's been very useful for us to, to look back at the, the mess that we made on the 20th of October. Well, Jessica, we're just so excited and we'll be very excited as more and more information comes out. So we'll stay in touch and you just yeah. let us know what's going on, okay? Will do. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Thanks so much.